Some of you may be familiar with the traditional wastewater treatment plants. Those of you who have not, this is what the traditional wastewater treatment plant looks like. And maybe you can imagine the accompanying smell that goes with these uh, structures. Let's just see another picture. Uh, typically, these facilities are built outside the cities for obvious reasons. That means that you know, all the wastewater is collected in uh, sewer pipes. It's all pumped outside the cities where these typically large centralized treatment plants are built. That's, this is the traditional approach. Uh, what we are talking about here is the alternative, and this is what the alternative looks like. It is possible to do this in a, in a, in a radically uh, different way. Um, what we do, however, is very much based on traditional approaches. Uh, in the wastewater industry, it's called activated sludge um, uh, technology, which has been around for 100 years. And what we do, we use the same principles, except that we combine it with uh, ecological engineering principles. And what that means, hopefully, will be clear in the next few minutes. At the heart of these uh, treatment plants are these basic reactors. And uh, the elements that you see here are traditional. That means that we have about four or five meter deep reactors. This is typical in the industry. And we have a lot of hungry bacteria, typically in a traditional treatment plant, in suspension. That means these little bugs are moving around in these reactors and they are absorbing the, uh, the dissolved organic matter building into their bodies. Um, they are kept in suspension by the fine bubble aeration, which is also a very standard uh, solution in the industry. And the, the essence of the approach is that you have a lot of hungry mouths or little creatures or bacteria that eat the, the food in the waste stream, which we consider contamination, it's actually food for these little bugs. In a traditional approach, that means about six to eight hundred species, so six to eight hundred different kinds of little bugs, who are swimming all the time. And the, in the industry, they can keep uh, about four kilos of all these little creatures in each cubic meter of uh, um, reactor space. These are the numbers we need to remember because then we can compare how we do things differently. So again, six to eight hundred species and about four kilos of these guys swimming around all the time. Okay? So let's take a look at it. How do we do this differently? What's the difference uh, between an organic approach and the traditional approach? So first of all, we put these uh, plant racks on top of the, uh, of the reactors and then we put on plants. And the roots of the plants dangle into the water about a meter and a half deep. People usually say that, oh, this is great. You know, these are these nice green plants that are treating the, the water. When in fact, that's not true. The, the role of the plants is to provide habitat in their root zone for additional species. Uh, you see that, you know, all the species that like to swim all the time are in the traditional approach. That's six to eight hundred. But once you provide a habitat, an option to, you know, to attach yourself, to have a rest, you know, all new kind of species can be brought into play. So the role of the, of, the, uh, of the plants is to provide habitat for the additional 3,000 species that we put into the, uh, into the reactors. The root zone is actually an excellent habitat, and we'll talk about it because the, uh, in more details because it attracts a lot of population, a large number and a large diversity of species. And the larger the, the diversity of the system, as you will see again later, you know, there will be economic benefits. And that's the reason why we actually do this. But the, as I said, because the plant roots don't grow much deeper than a meter and a half, we develop additional real estate. That's the, what we call the artificial root zone or biomodule. And uh, uh, we manage to mimic the, uh, the structure and the density of the root zone. And, uh, and with that, we are able to fill the entire reactor space with additional uh, you know, space to live. 
In this slide, you can see how the whole building is put together. So you have the, the reactor space with the plant tracks on top, with the, uh, with the root zone and the artificial uh, media below. And uh, the, uh, this ecosystem then is covered typically with a greenhouse if the, uh, if the climate is such. And, uh, and what you can also find is traditional equipment that you can find in, a, in, a, in, a, in any normal uh, standard wastewater treatment plant, such as pumps, valves, blowers, uh, and uh, mixers. Uh, blowers are very important components because to, uh, to keep all this ecosystem alive, you need a lot of air because these bugs not only eat. In order to eat, they also breathe. And you have to provide them all this, uh, all this air. And uh, because the treatment, the, the reactors are rather deep, four or five meter deep, you can imagine the water pressure under such a water column. Uh, that means a lot of energy, most of the energy in the wastewater treatment plant is actually used to pump the, uh, the, the air into the bottom of the uh, reactors.